so we're here at uh, Linaro Connect uh, here in Vancouver and uh, who are you? My name is Jem Davis, I'm an ARM Fellow and I'm now General Manager of ARM's new Machine Learning Group. So uh, there's an announcement uh, where ARM is doing something with the machine learning with Linaro? Yes indeed, so the, uh, the content of my uh, presentation today was ARM is announcing two things. The first is uh, we have found a member of the uh, Linaro Machine Intelligence Initiative and uh, that we are donating to that uh, that, that initiative the uh, open source software ARMNN, which is ARM's uh, in software inference engine for machine learning uh, designed specifically to run uh, at the edge on the wide variety of ARM devices. So uh, you are providing a whole bunch of uh, open source software for the machine learning so is that the algorithms, or what is it? The protocols, or what is what is it? So the inference engine is is uh, it, we take in a model uh, and some data, and we run the model on that data and actually perform the inference stage. And the code it consists of both that inference engine itself, and also uh, it's based on top of a large quantity of. Op extremely optimized code to run on CPUs, GPUs, and our new neural network processor uh, because uh, actually we find that a naive implementation versus a properly optimized implementation can be two orders of magnitude difference in performance. I mean, you can get a 100x speed up by optimizing these things properly. 100 times speed up yeah, compared just, to running it on the CPU or the GPU? Or uh, just running naive code, uh, running optimized code, properly understanding the effects of the memory system and uh, the data, yeah, you can get anything up to 100x. So the optimization is incredibly important. And ARM is in a position with its uh, capability of understanding the microarchitectures of the CPUs and their GPUs and our ability to do uh, in-depth performance analysis. We're in a position to be able to do this uh, probably better than others. So, um, without trying to get any uh, secrets out of uh, what kind of machine learning they're using, but uh, Huawei, I guess, is doing one, uh, Qualcomm is doing another one, maybe Apple is doing another one. Many, many of the ARM licensees are doing their own right now, or so I, some of them... I, I believe that what uh, Qualcomm was announcing today is that it is moving to port to use the ARM uh, software framework. So people are already seeing great value in what we are doing. It's an open framework, so if people wish to uh, provide their own uh, neural network accelerators, they can plug those into this framework. So it's possible to just plug in. So, you, so does that mean that people have their own uh, machine learning on the die, like physically? Yes. So but then they kind of hook into your protocol, what, what is it called? Uh, Protocol. So Protocols? yes, n n n several of the ARM licensees are implementing their own neural, ne dedicated neural network processes, uh, just as we are. We're building our own to license to those partners, and there is a need for that framework to be open, to be documented, to be easy to use, to get people to plug into this framework. And uh, is this, for example, right now there's some seven nanometers coming on the market. Yep. Is this a huge opportunity to use all this space that frees up on the die? Yeah, everybody always, everybody always talks about the fact there's going to be all this free space and this that, and the other, but uh, oftentimes it doesn't seem to happen that way. But yes, I mean, 7 nanometers provides the ability to lay you know, an awful lot of transistors, and increasingly we will find those spent on domain-specific processing. And machine learning processing is turning out to be one of the most, most important uh, forms of domain-specific processing. So already for uh, imaging, is is it's huge bo uh, boost to use AI. It, it, uh, AI is being used across pretty much every single use case you can imagine. But yes, it is becoming popular in image processing as well. So you, you had some other examples of some of their like uh, you know concrete and people can really understand the, the usefulness right now, right? Yes, I mean most of the successful uses of uh, computer vision and of uh, speech recognition, things like that, are being based on top of uh, machine learning algorithms. So, uh, can you talk a bit more specifically what, what you think Linaro can do in terms of uh, helping in this area? Is there going to be anything about you know all these amazing Linaro engineers coming up with new algorithms or? I think uh, Lenaro is the ideal place to uh, collaborate around software in the open source. And so uh, we hope, we are donating 
what we've done already. It's about 100 man years of effort that we've put in already. Uh, but we are hoping people will add to that. You know, they will show where they can do better or where they've got better ideas. Um, we found Lenaro to be a very productive environment for collaboration in the past. And you said that there was not enough bandwidth in the world for all this. Uh, like all every every smart security camera streaming 4K to a cloud is, is going to break the internet. So is it already working out uh, the way that these are using AI, or is this a lot more potential? Yeah. So if we look at something like um, the Hive security camera. Um, it's already using machine learning techniques running on the device itself to trigger whether there is anything interesting in the video. So it's continuously recording, uh, continuously viewing, uh, and of course most of the time nothing happens. But if a person comes into the frame, then it thinks, oh, this might be interesting. So it sets off a trigger. It's only at that point that it might be uh, sending uh, the data off to somewhere else, perhaps to your mobile phone and say, hey, look, this person is standing at your front door. What do you want to do about it? So uh, is it true you were in charge of uh, the GPU? Right? Uh, yes, I'm yeah. general manager of the media processing group in ARM for uh, just under a year. And that has been a fantastic experience, I guess, right? Oh, it was tremendous. I mean, I, sp I spent uh, I spent 12 years uh, involved in the, the media processing group. I was involved in the very original acquisition, which formed the basis of it. And we took that business from zero to over 1.2 billion units per year. Our customers, our partners, were shipping 1.2 billion chips per year. There's so no that, that was huge. There's no, I mean, uh, there's just an awesome job. There's no other bigger GPU company in the world. Oh no, I mean we are we, number we, one. No, by yeah. by a long way. I mean we're probably 50% bigger than anybody else. So uh, is it a little bit like working in a startup now to do the machine learning? Like is it yes. a new kind of office, a new kind of... Uh... So that's exactly the way we're treating it. Um, CEO and the executive committee are very generously funding us and saying, hey, go and build this. And um, we are treating it very much as a startup. Uh, we're moving as rapidly as we can uh, within the confines of ARM and occasionally we make mistakes and you know we correct those as quickly as we can. So we built a completely new processor within 12 months. That's never been done before. And the reason it, we've been able to do that is we've been taking decisions very, very quickly uh, and changing them when the data says you should change your mind. So what's the secret of uh, being the world leader? How, how, how do you get, uh, what is the secret sauce? Is this something you know? <laughs> if I could bottle it, I would sell it for a lot of money. I, I think there are several secrets. The first is um, you, you have to start with the customers at the front of everything you do. Um, we have to build IP that will work with many, many different partners. One of the success stories of the GPU was our ability to take an architecture and scale it to multiple performance points. Um, because actually customers say, oh, I want this much performance. Uh, no, I don't. I want two thirds of that. Or, oh, 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 oh I got that wrong. Uh, I want three X the performance. And so their ability to be able to take a particular performance point, scale it up and down, turns out to be incredibly useful and one of the reasons why customers love Marley. You can rest assured we're looking at that for our neural network processor as well. So uh, why is it really all exploding right now, This all this neural network? Because people have been kind of potentially been able to do it for a long time. Well, they have been yeah, for a long of, time, but a lot why, of these is why is it happening now? A lot of these algorithms are, you know, best part of 50 years old. The uh, change is um, some degree of uh, improvement in the algorithms. They're not quite the same as they were 50 years ago. But predominantly, it's all about the data. There is now uh, available to people large data sets of very high quality uh, annotated data to use as the uh, training data to train those algorithms. All right, so, so it's happening, it's not just a, a marketing buzzword, right? It's right, something there, there is a lot of marketing buzzwords. There is a lot of hype. We are probably at the peak of uh, ML hype. But that doesn't mean it's not real. That doesn't mean that it isn't going to be huge. We believe it will be huge. We believe it will affect everything we do. Internally, we have a tendency to say, ML is software 2.0.
software 2.0 and it's all the way from the cortex m0 plus kind of absolutely all absolutely. the way up to to a, a self-driving car or self-driving let's say a, a rocket space rocket or any kind of huge completely. could be a huge chip right completely and so you're going to provide everything in uh, the whole we range. are trying to provide everything uh one of the things we're doing here at lenaro is saying look hey guys we can't do everything here is what we are doing um you know will you please contribute as well